The winds of politics can change in a heartbeat. Just look at Mitt Romney. In one month, he's been on the cover of Time magazine twice, from Why Don't You Like Me, uh, which was the first cover story you'll see in a moment, to So You Like Me Now. <laughs> Joining us is Joe Klein, a columnist for Time Magazine who wrote the cover story uh, on the right, and CBS News political director John Dickerson. Uh, good morning to good both morning. of you. So have his fortunes really changed, Joe? No. Do they like him now? No. <laughs> no, look, you know, the, the bottom line on Mitt Romney and on the Republican Party and on this race is the number of people who showed up in Iowa. It was the same as in 19, in 2008, the Republican Party was completely demoralized after eight years of George Bush. Uh, the, the Democratic race was exciting. 120,000 Republicans showed up in 2008. This time, the Republicans are all head up about getting rid of Obama and 120,000 people showed up for the Republican primaries, and only 75% of those were Republicans. So there isn't much excitement there, and this is a big long-term problem for Mitt Romney. So if, if the polling <clears throat> continues to hold steady, it's not so much next Tuesday here in New Hampshire of how much Romney wins by. I guess the real number, Joe, that you're saying we need to pay attention to is how many people show up. Well, yeah, that's part of it. I think that that's a big deal. What, what should we look for this weekend? A couple of big debates uh, coming up, and I would imagine there's been enough uh, sparks being thrown around so far that we should see some fireworks on stage, John? Sure. Well, you've got a number of candidates who have to do, uh, have to n either <laughs> knock Mitt, Mitt Romney down or present themselves as the plausible alternative to Mitt Romney. Now, the trick here is, uh, do you, when you're going into these debates, do you, do you go, the problem with going after Mitt Romney is sometimes you can hurt yourself and help other candidates who look sort of over-modulated on these, in these debates. So it's very tricky. And you also have to, one of the things a lot of candidates try and do in the debates is present themselves as as a pleasant so candidates, now. and so that's a very difficult balancing act in these debates, which are you know where you only get a minute to talk. I want to ask you about Newt Gingrich. You saw him just a few minutes ago here on the early show, saying essentially that his comments about food stamps and African Americans are being misinterpreted. But why keep going there? I mean, race is such a sensitive issue. Does this really? Well, because play he really well? he really believes it. I've known Newt for 25 years, and. Uh, he has, especially when he was the speaker, he really, he, he really involved himself in the politics of Washington, D.C., a majority black city, because he really thought that his ideas about eliminating poverty were better. And I think that we can overreact as members of the media uh, to, to statements that are made by these candidates. Uh, Newt has a way of looking at poverty. It is a very legitimate way to look at it, and it really has worked in, the, in terms of welfare reform. And so we have to be a lot more discerning when we ask people like Gingrich who have very, very sophisticated ideas about this, um, you know, to oversimplify them. So let's look ahead then uh, to South Carolina because obviously uh, things seem to be somewhat solidifying here in New Hampshire, but I can't imagine the run for the Republican nomination ends in New Hampshire next Tuesday. So build me some, we've been talking about the credible narrative. What could happen here? Well, I think that, um, I don't know that much of anything's going to happen here. The debates are going to happen but here. But I mean, in South Carolina moving forward, yeah, is there I something mean, that happens where Romney gets derailed? Well, I think, I think that what has to happen before this race begins to really uh, solidify is that the anti-Romney has to be chosen. And I think that'll happen in South Carolina. You'll have three candidates going forward from there, which will be Romney, Ron Paul, and the anti-Romney. Mm -hmm. But we don't know who that other person's going to be yet. And Not what today. Romney hopes is that what, basically South Carolina is a version of what happened in Iowa, that it's a muddle, that there is no anti-Romney, that the anti-Romneys of Perry Gingrich and Santorum all kind of split their vote, and that there is no plausible alternative to him, and that that, can't, that question can't get worked out. A lot of people are trying to figure out who the alternative is, but it doesn't get worked out, and then all of those candidates essentially run out of money. Got it. John Dickerson, Joe Klein, thank you so much for helping us sort it all out this morning. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys.